Do you think it's just dumb luck that some people easily get everything they desire in their lives? Do you think that maybe you haven't been showered with much of that luck in your life? I'm going to share some information with you today that may change your perception about who's really in charge of your life and why you may or may not have gotten everything you want out of it. I have a very short time to cover a very expansive topic, so I'm going to give you just three, just three pieces of instruction that will help you change your life. Now, this information isn't new. It's been taught by many, many teachers of mankind over the centuries in many different ways. So let's get started. You should have been given a pencil or a pen and an index card. Please take those out and number down the left side of the card, one, two, and three. We're going to write just three short words on these cards. And the first word I'd like you to write is this word, vision. Or you can call it a goal if you'd like to, vision. Now the thing that you need to know about a vision is simply this. You absolutely must have a clear, definite, detailed mental picture of what it is that you want. You can't be vague. You can't say, I want to be rich and do good things with that money. It's not enough. You can't say, I want to travel and live a full life. That's not enough. Think of it this way. If you text a message to a friend, do you send them the alphabet and ask them to put the words together for you? No. And you can't do that with the universe either. You have to be precise. Now, I've had people say to me, but I don't have enough experience to figure out what it is to put the detail to the vision that I have. Then do the research. Find out what those details are. Let's use just a real simple example. Let's say you decide you want to go skydiving. Sitting on the couch and saying, I want to go skydiving, probably isn't going to make it happen. But if you study the topic online or in books, if you talk to people who've been skydiving and you find out what their experience was, what the pros and cons were, if you go to a skydiving school and you pack a chute and you get some training, that is going to add detail to that vision. Next to the number two, I'd like you to write the word focus. Focus. Now here's what you need to know about focus. You have to spend every leisure moment focusing on your vision with the unwavering belief that it is already yours. Already yours. You have to see yourself being, doing, having your vision. And if you want to really add some power to it, put some emotion in there. Feel what it's going to feel like to have or be or do your vision. You want to add even more power? Talk about it. Tell everybody about it. It so disappoints me when people say, oh, I don't want to talk about my goals. I'll jinx it. Just the opposite is true. There's power to talking about it. And there's even more power if you write about it. So if you're not writing in a daily journal, that might be a habit you want to start doing. You know, there's a guy named Waddle, Wallace Wattles, say that seven times real fast. Wallace Wattles wrote a book called The Science of Getting Rich in 1910. And in that book he said, the hardest thing a human being does is to focus on a goal. And failure to attain that goal happens only when you lose that focus and the belief that it is already yours. Focus. Number three, write this word next to number three. Create. Now there are three factors to creating that I want to share with you because these are really important. Number one, 
first and foremost, you have to give up all thoughts of competition. This is not about competing with someone else for something they already have or they are. This is about creating new. Albert Einstein told his friends before he died that he thought the dumbest theory he ever had was that there's a substance in the universe that cannot be measured, and yet all new things are created from it. Now, what that means, and by the way, scientists have since proven that his theory was correct through quantum physics, that there absolutely is a substance that stabilizes the universe, cannot be measured, but all expansion comes from that substance. Now, what that means to you is this is not a dog-eat-dog, -dog, claw your way to the top, anything for a buck mentality that is needed in order to get what it is that you want. You know, the purpose of life is to expand. The purpose of life is to experience, to evolve. And when you rise from the competitive plane to the creative plane, you give more back in use value to the world than you ever take in cash value. So don't ever think you're taking from someone else to get what you want. That is not true. Here's something else you don't want to feel. You don't want to feel inadequate or unable to attain your goal in some way. You know, Nelson Mandela, one of my favorite quotes in the world, put it perfectly about this topic. He said, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. And as we let our own light shine, we give others permission to do the same. Second, let go of the how. Let go of the how. Scientifically proven, the universe must deliver to you whatever you envision. Scientifically proven. So it's not your job to worry about the how. Here's what the universe knows about solutions and how-tos and how to make things happen. And here's what you know. This little bit of information and experience and how, that's what you know. Do you think the universe might have a better answer as to how your vision is going to happen? Not your job to worry about the how, but when the universe opens doors for you, you better take action. Third, be grateful. Be grateful. Gratefulness begets more to be grateful for. Wow. So every day, find a time in your life when you can mentally make a list of the things that you are grateful for, and don't forget to include the things you're grateful for that you don't quite have yet, but you're going to. That is the best way to be grateful. Either think it or write it down, and both are very powerful. Create. You know, I've created a lot of visions in my life, and I'd like to share with you just one story, one true story, that will help you illustrate what it is that I'm trying to explain to you. In September of 2006, my husband and I decided to sell our 3,500 square foot house and everything in it so that he could join me on the road while I was speaking and teaching. Now, the solution was we were going to be full-time RVers. That was the solution. And we thought it was a pretty good one because, hey, we could stay in perfect weather all the time, we could see the country, and we could scope out where we might want to retire eventually. But the list of problems were huge. The biggest one was real estate was in a downturn market at that time. 
And we knew we were going to lose a lot of money on our house, money that we needed to spend on these huge purchases that we knew nothing about, a fifth wheel and a truck to haul it. And that was going to be hard to figure out. And then we had to sell all the stuff in that 3,500 square foot house. It seemed overwhelming, but I had just read two books on how to manifest your life, and I decided to put them to the test. So we put the house up for sale, and from September 06 to January 07, not one bite. No one came to see the house. So I decided to kick my focus into gear, and I created a vision board. Now, you may have heard of vision boards. Important to visualizing. So I put pictures of the fifth wheel I thought we might want on it. I put pictures of a black F-350 King Ranch dually honking truck that we knew nothing about. I put pictures of RV resorts across the country we might want to go visit. I put pictures of our grandkids in the interior pictures of the RV as if they were traveling with us in the summertime. And down in the lower right corner, I put a picture of a house with a blueprint that I thought we might want to retire in someday. <laughs> I did my research, too. We went to a factory, and we watched fifth wheels be being built and learned more about how to operate them, etc., because we knew absolutely nothing about RVing at all. Had never RVed in our lives. We went to um, the factory and watched them being built. I got on the computer. I got in chat rooms. I talked to people who were full-time RVers. I learned more about the culture. I learned more about the pros and cons of RVing. I wrote in my daily journal every night about how it was going to feel to be gypsies on the road. No one would know where we were. I thought that was a really good idea. So I had my vision, I was focused, and creation was inevitable in my mind. Still no bites on the house. Around the first week of February, I'm online, and I'm looking for these trucks. And there's not very many of them in the country because ranchers keep those suckers until they die. So I go on eBay, never been on eBay in my life, and I find the exact same truck that's on my vision board sitting across from my desk every day that I'm looking at, a black, down to the color, King Ranch F-350 Dually honking truck. And the ladies in Colorado, and I'm thinking, how in the world is this going to work? The auction ended. Nobody bid on it. I called her. I said, I think I want your truck. I flew my husband out to Colorado. He drove it home. We parked it in the cul-de-sac because it wouldn't fit in my garage. And we looked at it out my office window every day <laughs> and thought, what in the heck? have we done? Around the first week of March, I realized I had skipped a step. I had forgotten to tell the universe when I wanted this to be done. So I went over to the vision board with a marker and I wrote, April 2007. I stood back and looked at it and thought how petulant I was for thinking I could do this in less than two months. That was crazy. The next day, let me just repeat that. The next day, a realtor brought a lady through our home. She liked it. She was willing to pay our list price. She had cash, and she wanted to buy 80% of the contents. So we ordered the RV. By June 22nd, we were on the road with our grandchildren in tow on our first excursion to upstate New York. And then we kept doing it for another five years. Vision, focus, create. Three little words you might want to keep with you or somewhere visible where it can remind you how important it is to do exactly this. 
and also to remind you that life doesn't happen to you. It happens because of what you're thinking. What you're thinking. Now, I'd like to recommend to you that you continue to study this topic, and there's lots of information out there about it. But I'm going to give you three books that I read that helped me tremendously. First of all, Mike Dooley wrote a book called Infinite Possibilities. He's also written other books which are excellent too. Mike's motto or theme through his writings is, thoughts become things, choose the good ones. The Secret, which is also a movie, teaches us that nothing comes to our experience unless it's through persistent thought. And remember Wallace Waddles and the Science of Getting Rich? You can download that book for free at thescienceofgettingrich.net. The lady who owns the website, Rebecca Fine, writes in the introduction of that book, if you're not yet where you want to be in terms of personal success, the problem may not be what you're doing as much as how you're doing it. And that begins with how you think. If you want to change your life, you may just need to change your mind. So I think we've pretty much answered the question we started with. Who is in charge of your life? Well, that would be you. There is no serendipity. There is no coincidence. There are no accidents. There is no predestination. It is all up to you. And all you have to do is have the vision, focus on it, and create it. Thank you. Thank you.